My name's Jason Poole and I'm an industrial designer and I've been getting after it for about 20 years now. And ever since I was a young kid, I just I just wanted to design stuff and build things. Well, I didn't start as a designer. This is the thing. We have a thing called Work Experience Week before we left school. And my opportunity was with a company that manufactured racing cars. I was actually one of these people that graduated high school with a diploma in her hand and had absolutely no clue what I was going to do. So at the time, I lived near Ashley Furniture and I started working there, working on a machine out in the factory. And I kind of got myself into this and started taking some classes. And once I started taking some night classes, I got hooked. I actually started my training and my career on the drafting board. Then after a couple years, um, I moved into the 2D CAD and then 3D wire frames. And then finally, I saw SolidWorks in January 1996, and it was just like. From a really young age, I, I wanted to be a creator. I wanted to make things. I wanted to design things. I was really drawn to cars and motorcycles and uh, I liked buses and like anything like uh, transportation was really what was that for me. I had an awesome uh, teacher in art school taught me that like design is everywhere. It's in everything that we do uh, from products we use to things we drive. I started off my training in the machine shop but everything we designed in that business was done using AutoCAD or a, or a 2D software. They invested in a 3D package. None of the older designers wanted to touch it. It was kind of like, well, no, I like my 2D stuff. So they gave me the drawings and I learned and developed those skills to do the 3D models, to then put in the CAM software, to then manufacture the parts. I showed a little flair for the 3D modeling side of it. So after I finished my apprenticeship, I moved into the design office. One summer, a very good friend of mine gave me a call and asked me if I wanted to be on a, on a design team that she was putting together for a series of travel mugs for a very popular chain of coffee stores. That was the summer of 1998. This is one of four travel mugs that, that we worked on. I was responsible primarily for this outer shell, this, this translucent plastic tumbler, along with the inner shell. This is 1998, so there's no visualize or composer or anything. So here's the, the lid cleaning instructions. And those were <laughs> images actually from the SolidWorks model. We needed a cabinet out in the factory where I was working. And so of course they said, well, draw something and show us what you want. They're just kind of starting up engineering. It was AutoCAD. And then yeah, a few years later, we moved into SolidWorks and we've been there ever since. Right outside of Chicago, I was there working on video games, but I still wanted to do something a little bit more. So I took a job with Orange County Choppers and started making motorcycles. I got to design around 300 different custom motorcycles. I worked pretty much exclusively in the motorsport industry and I did many Le Mans 24 hour races with, with various teams, and various classes. And the one year that stands out most to me was when we, the year we won, we won our class. During the race, when fuel goes in the vehicle, nothing else can happen. People can't change tires. You're not allowed to touch the car. The only people that are in the pit lane are the, the refueler and the guy with the fire extinguisher. So that is dead time. I basically dismantled the whole refueling rig and went through it piece by piece. And I modeled the whole system in SolidWorks and ran a flow simulation. Then I went to work improving all the components that we had, blending all the transitions in and out of each other nice and smooth or remachining them again from solid changing the angle of diffusion from one diameter to another so there was no separation of flow inside the tubes and whatnot. Did all that and we, we had a net time saving of four seconds on a pit stop. I think we went from something like 26 seconds to 22 seconds to fill the tank. Now, that doesn't sound a lot, but that year we did 36 refueling stops in 24 hours. Now, when you multiply that by four seconds, that adds up to, uh, I think it was a, a clear lap of time for the team. 
going to SolidWorks was terrifying to me because I didn't have a real big um, engineering background. So then it was kind of like, you know, what if I don't get this? What if I don't get 3D and, you know, I'm my mind is stuck in the 2D world. But once we jumped in there, of course, we loved it. I work in domestic case goods bedroom. So I work mainly in bedroom furniture. That's all I work in. When you do go visit someone and they're like, you know, hey, I got this new Ashley furniture bedroom set. And, you know, seeing people actually enjoying their furniture, something that you helped create is very fulfilling. Once I got out of the video games and into choppers, it, it kind of hit me that like, okay, I gotta, I gotta be able to do real life things here now. <laughs> Okay, this is a carburetor. It's got a bolt hole that exists here, here, and here. And there, there's there's real life numbers. So I, I knew I had to do my best impression to pretend to be an engineer. Okay, <laughs> and uh, and SolidWorks uh, was introduced to me by by Jeff Ray back in 2004. And it was, you know, he's like, this is going to change the way you do things. It really is. It made creating the models and, and everything that I was doing, it made it real. It, it put it into real life because it was real data that we could machine in the machine shop and actually turn into a product or a component on the bike. My first couple of weeks with SolidWorks were, were some dark times. I, I was terrified. I was, <laughs> I was like, oh man, this is for engineers, man. This is like real life stuff, you know? <laughs> like I got no right in this software, you know? And I just started, I just started jacking with it, man. And I just started failing and failing. And then, then you, ah, oh, I'm not going to fail this time. I'm going to figure this one out and I'm going to go here. And I just kept with it. And for me, it just got so much, it got so much easier to use. So it was less time figuring things out and more time doing what I needed to get done. For the past 15 years, I've been at um, Omex Corporation, which is arguably the, the world leading producer of abrasive water jet machines. An abrasive water jet machine is a system where we have a nozzle that's connected to an ultra high pressure pump. So about 50,000 to 90,000 pounds per square inch of water pressure focused in an extremely tight stream, somewhere in the diameter of 15 to 30 thousandths of an inch. And the water is traveling at about one and a half times the speed of sound. And it also typically has a garnet abrasive that actually does the cutting, if you will. There's virtually nothing that you cannot cut with, with a water jet machine. In the pit lane, you see all the engineers on the pit wall in their little tent with the TVs and things. And you'll see engineers there with the, with the binoculars looking down the pit lane to see the other team's pit stops and seeing where they're saving time. That year, every time our car came in, every one of them turned around with their stopwatch and was timing it. You know, they, they thought we were doing things like uh, pressurizing the fuel rig or something to like force the fuel down the pipe. But no, it's just basic fluid flow down a pipe. I got a good, should we say a good bonus that year? <laughs> I had to design a, a motorcycle for Shaquille O'Neal and that dude is tall and he's big. Any one of our bikes, it, it just like, we made big, really big bikes, you know, and it was just not big enough for him. The grips were like, like this big around like like and we couldn't we couldn't ride it the foot controls are like what are you going to do so my buddy christian we put uh wooden platforms that were 12 inches high and he got on and he couldn't sit on the seat still you know because it was so far away so we put a, a a leather bag on top of the gas tank we ratchet strapped it to the gas tank and he sat on the gas tank to reach it was the funniest, weirdest looking thing you've ever seen, man. It's like, how to die on a motorcycle? Yeah. I started the very first SolidWorks user group, the Seattle area SolidWorks power user group in April of 96, um, several weeks after we had acquired the, the software at the community college that I was teaching at. And we also hosted the, the very first user group meeting. About 12 SolidWorks customers. I mean, there's about a, a dozen of my students. From that 
little acorn, if you will, grew the, the, the mighty oak that is the Swagin, the SolidWorks user group network of today with the almost 220 user groups, you know, thousands and thousands of, of members worldwide. But I've always been involved in the in the SolidWorks user community as a user group leader, as an educator. But these past several years, I've you know really immersed and fully engaged with um, my fellow community members around the country and around the world has probably been you know some of the most fulfilling you know five six years of of both my personal and my professional life. Just recently. I became a coach mentor for FIRST Robotics team, and we use SolidWorks on that team. So training the kids on that team, and we've only had the team for a couple years, but we've done really well. I think when we competed at the world event a couple years ago, it was 400 teams. And I work in squares and rectangles, so now to coach students in robotics and gears pulleys, whatever, metal, it, it's all new for me. So I need to teach myself a lot of things before I can teach the kids. Recently, I did sign up to the Champions program. And that's been really, really interesting. It's kind of re-sparked my interest now in, in um, passing on some of my knowledge and, and, and skills. I think that's what gets me excited in the future is the education and just getting people to realize that everything we touched is designed and engineered somehow. I want to continue to inspire and educate other people about, about the industrial design industry as a whole. Industrial design is a really cool profession. Uh, you get to do a lot of really cool projects and it's, it's always a great experience. Find out what you want to do. Find out what gets you going. Get after it. Don't be afraid of failure because when you string enough failures in a row, you're going to get something right and you're going to learn from what not to do, you know? And that, that I think is a big one is, is to accept failure, but don't accept failure twice for the same thing.